In this short video, I want to take a look at another way to spot a potentially cheap share, the price to sales ratio. It also may highlight when a stock's overpriced. So, who are his fans? Well, we've got Ken Fisher and Jim O'Shaughnessy amongst them up on the screen. These are two people who over the long term have made quite a bit of money for themselves and for investors, and both are fairly prolific authors too, in super stocks. Ken Fisher said the largest profits regularly result from buying stocks with low price to sales ratios. There it is. Jim O'Shaughnessy, what works on Wall Street a little bit later, low price to sales ratio stocks consistently produce, there it is again, low price to sales, higher returns, whilst dramatic language, high price to sales stocks are toxic. So clearly this ratio has some quite big fans in the market. So let's take a look at what it is, when it's useful, and one or two drawbacks. Now the logic, most people would say the most important figure in a set of accounts at the end of the day is the one that comes on the first piece of paper you hit in financial statements terms, the profit and loss account, right at the top, the sales number. And it's at the top because you're not selling anything, you haven't really got a business. Now people do buy stocks where firms actually aren't selling anything, but it's pretty high risk. So sales is the key driver of everything else that a business does, profits, cash flow, and so on. So the price to sales ratio focuses on that. And it's not just that it's an important number. A lot of people would say that sales is quite a difficult figure to manipulate. It's not impossible to manipulate. In another video, accounting red flags, revenue recognition, I explain how it can be manipulated, but it is relatively difficult compared to some other numbers in the profit and loss account. So the logic is that you should compare a, a firm's current price to its sales per share or market capitalization to total sales as an indicator of whether the firm is cheap or expensive in market value terms compared to its annual sales number. So how would that look? If you're crunching the numbers, most of the time you won't have to, but if you were crunching the numbers, you would compare the price per share, it's the latest share price, straightforward enough, to sales revenue per share. So if you're doing it on a per share basis, you want one share and revenue per share, or you could do the firms up here, total market capitalization compared to sales revenue for one year. All right, and that would give you the PSR, as it's sometimes quoted, the price to sales ratio. Now, as with all ratios, there are a couple of ways of doing this thing. So on the bottom, <coughs> you can use a historic sales figure, or you'll see some people using a forward sales figure on the basis that what did happen is less important than what we think will happen in terms of should I buy the share or not, all right? Now, as I pointed out, you'll normally have this presented to you. It's called a ratio, so it'll be a number of times. So just in very simple terms, if the price per share was 100p or a pound, sales revenue per share happened to be, let's say, 20p, then your price to sales ratio mechanically would come out at five times. So there we are. Now, <clears throat> interpretation, okay? Typically, five is a bit toppy by the way, typically the range is more like naught to four. It doesn't have to be, but that is more typical. So previous example, just for illustration, a low PSR, all right, now five would not be a low PSR, as it happens, a low PSR, some people say below one in particular, if you can find it, suggests a firm is cheap, all right? Now people disagree about what exactly a low PSR is, but below one, seen as cheap, low compared to everybody else in a bull market can also be seen as cheap, just be, just be careful with the interpretation. A high PSR, some people would say above one, some people would just say where, where, where everything's above one, relative to the rest of the market, tends to suggest a firm's expensive. Because you're saying basically, am I paying a lot for a year's worth of sales, or am I paying relatively little for a year's worth of sales? That's kind of the basis on which you're working this. Now, pros and cons. Sounds straightforward, and it is straightforward. A lot of people are drawn in by the simplicity of the calculation and the interpretation, but be careful. Magic numbers are not always as helpful as they first seem. So, advantages. It is simple to calculate. All right, you can see that from the math I just did. It's relatively straightforward. It's one of the most straightforward valuation ratios out there. Sales figure, as we mentioned, relatively difficult to manipulate in accounting sort of policy terms, okay? 
useful where a firm isn't making a profit. Because if you think about it, if you're trying to compare companies in a sector where everyone's losing money because they're all trying to grow, you can't do things like price earnings ratios. If there's no dividend, you can't compare them on a dividend yield basis. If there's no EBITDA, you can't do enterprise value to EBITDA. But if there's a sales number, you've at least got something here which allows you to make a value judgment comparing one firm to another or one firm to a sector. Useful, where earnings and cash flow are volatile. So if you're looking at firms where there are positive earnings and there is positive cash flow, but they're very unpredictable and volatile, maybe you can draw some conclusions from a trend in the price to sales ratio. That's kind of the logic. May uncover a bargain earlier than other ratios. That is to say that you know firms which are actually growing quite aggressively, that may not come through always in other numbers in a way that it could come through in the price to sales ratio. On the con side, it's a narrow view, you are literally relying on the sale number as your main driver of value and judgment as to whether you should buy or sell. Some people say that you know, it really is putting all your eggs into sort of one basket. Um, low share price and price to sales ratio may conceal a poor share sales outlook. So the point here is that you've got to be careful not to just jump in and go, whoa, I've got a bargain, low price to sales ratio. It may be low for a reason, so interpretation is vital. It's a bit dangerous just to go, mm, price to sales ratio less than one, off I go, obviously a buy. All right. It also may conceal low profit margins. All right, just bear that in mind because this is the ratio that focuses just on sales. If you've got a difference, perhaps it's explained by the fact that one firm makes decent margins, so converts sales into profits, and another firm doesn't. You know, by itself, looking at the sales number doesn't tell you how effective a firm is at converting sales into what really matters, which is profits and cash flow. All right, and it does ignore debt. Now, there is a solution to that, covering another video. You could substitute price for enterprise value per share or total enterprise value against market capitalization. That would, to some extent, solve that problem. But the price to sales ratio by itself does ignore <coughs> largely or doesn't make explicit different levels of debt in different types of firm. And that affects risk, is what I'm basically trying to say. Now, a couple of examples of where, you know, if you use my rule of thumb and we're comparing firms using just the price to sales ratio, you could go a little bit wrong. Um, Diageo, the huge consumer goods giant, and Oxford Biomedica, a much smaller, all right, uh, lower market capitalization biotechnology play at the time this video was made, had very similar price to sales ratios. But can you draw any sort of meaningful conclusion on that basis? Not really. They're totally different sizes, totally different profitabilities, totally different scale, totally different sectors. All right, just jumping in and going, well, I can use the price to sales ratio to make a comparative judgment. Not really. Okay, that'd be true of other ratios, but just makes the point. Equally, <clears throat> down the bottom end. Okay, so these would be expensive, but are they really? When Diageo may offer quite a decent dividend yield, for example. Down the bottom end, the bargains. I said a price to sales ratio less than one is a bargain. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur, there you go. PSR below one. Lloyd's Banking Group, at the time this was done, PSR below one. But again, the question arises, similar price to sales ratios, but are these firms that actually belong anywhere near each other in terms of comparison? And people would say the reason that a football club might be a bargain on this basis is that only hard-bitten fans would tend to buy the shares. Same for Lloyd's Banking Group. There are reasons why it is relatively cheap at the moment. You need to understand those, I would suggest, before jumping in on a low PSR. So, basically, as Lord Sugar said, sales are important, but a business is not built on sales. I could take £10 notes, sell them for £9 all day long. People will take them off me and my turnover will be enormous. Unfortunately, I'll go bust as quickly as people can take those £10 notes off me. All right, so sales are important. Price to sales ratio has got the right idea there. But like any ratio, I wouldn't treat this as some kind of magic number. Okay, you need to do a bit more work and you need to understand why you're getting the conclusion that you are from the price to sales ratio.